What's up everybody, I'm Duke James. This is probably the last episode of the Brazil campaign. Uh, because the alpha version, the public alpha version for 3.0 released, I believe, yesterday. So I kind of want to move on to that. And there's really not a whole lot left to do in this campaign besides taking territory in the north. That's not very great territory. Very low development territory that's going to take a while to get. I played a little bit um, after the last episode and I've... Taken all of South America, with the exception of two provinces, which Song owns, which I'll probably just leave with them because it's it's Song, so. Then uh, I did lose some provinces to my vassal, Louisiana 2, which makes it look... It makes the map look worse, unfortunately, but uh, I could cut them loose and then reconquer those provinces, but it's not really worth it at this point. Then uh, there's only a couple... Mexican uh, minor countries left. There's this one right here, and then there's two provinces right here. Otherwise, these two countries are my vassals. And then uh, I did kick out Portugal from the New World, so they don't own this anymore. So it's just England owning Carolina, Canada, a little bit of uh, Mexico, and then France has taken California. So, I mean, I could go on to take those provinces, but at this point, I'd rather just move on to a new campaign and the new public alpha. So I'll go ahead and just use this uh, episode to review some provinces and then do a time lapse probably of North and South America and then a world view time lapse. Alright, so the first thing is a census. So in terms of uh, peasants, we crossed the 100 million mark. 100 Point two million peasants, growing by about 840,000 with an inward movement of 300,000. So we're getting more than a million peasant growth per year. Almost 10 million fighting age men, less than a million nomads. 4.3 million residents, losing about 27,000, inward movement about 80,000. Gentry is 681,000. Burgers, only 72,000. Burgers definitely are, are a constraint for most nations. And then th close to 300,000 clergy. In terms of wealth, peasants actually have more income than they spend. But uh, their luxury... Luxury for all of the estates plagued me this campaign. So, they're not doing pretty good there. Nomads, 1.4 income, average spending 0.5, so they're pretty good. Residents, average income 3.5, spending 3.1, they're pretty good. Luxury's a little bit better than the peasants, but still pretty low. Everybody's life needs are pretty good, though, so... Knowledge is good as well. Gentry, per capita wealth 600, they make 30, spend 21. Pretty much fulfillment's the same as everybody else. Burgers, per capita wealth for the burgers, because there's so few of them, 1,158 per capita wealth with them. They apparently spend more than they make, but their life needs are at 4.6. Comfort, 1.27. Luxury, 0.594. So they're actually better off than everybody else. And then the clergy, 24 spending, 470 per capita wealth. Average spending, 18. Their life and comfort's pretty good. Luxury is actually the best in our nation at 0.7. Industry, we have a food surplus, 22,588 versus 20,122. That's a decent surplus. Salt, is about uh, 1,900 units surplus there. Fiber has a good 1,500-ish surplus. Fuel. More than a thousand raw materials as a nice surplus as well we produce 477 exotic goods demand 498 so that's actually close to a surplus consumer goods and lug and industrial goods not doing pretty good there my cities weren't uh, actually that great kind of towards the middle of the campaign i started building start focusing really more on Getting my autonomy down, which kind of hamstrung me. 
Probably should have just ignored autonomy. But at that point, I didn't know that uh, I wouldn't be able to get my autonomy down, so I tried to uh, get that down and it didn't work out. So I think my cities were hurt by that. So there's a, a massive consumer deficit. Military, good surplus, good naval surplus, industrial, a little bit of a deficit, a little bit of a luxury deficit as well, and there is a knowledge surplus, more than a hundred. So speaking of autonomy, here's the autonomy map mode. In this campaign, of course, there was the uh, m and heat modifier, which I could do nothing about, which added 0.25 autonomy to, I believe, pretty much every province in my country. So, because of that, I really wasn't able to ever get to do the institutional, the reforms to reduce autonomy. So that hurt as well. So that added 0.25 and then it locked me out of 0.15 autonomy reduction from the reforms. That was definitely not uh, not good. And that was a pretty much a snowball effect because my autonomy was bad, so it never really got down, so I never really made as much as I could, so I couldn't invest as much as I could have if that autonomy was lower, and that affected autonomy, and then my cities and everything, etc., etc. And then uh, towards the end of the campaign, I kind of just gave up on that, on uh, autonomy, because as I was moving north, this area was going to add a whole bunch of autonomy, so at that point, it was pretty much like, kind of locked out of this anyway, so I'll just go back to investing into the provinces, the uh, industries in the provinces. This is the development map mode. So this is the worldwide development map mode, you can see there's really nothing north of Mexico. The uh, highest development province in our country Looks like it was a MAPA. Yeah, this province at 97 development was the highest development province in our country. This province has... 2.9 million peasants. 91,000 residents. The farmlands in this province made 866 ducats. Forestry is 468 ducats, 151 ducats from districts, 51 ducats from mines. This was definitely the uh, area that I've put a lot of money into towards the end of the campaign to build that up because it was closest to my capital. So Santorum has 1.6 million, close to 1.7 million peasants with about 86,000 residents. I don't think any provinces broke 100,000 residents. My capital did, 118,000. I think that's the highest. The highest resident. No, it's over here, 119,000 in the old capital. But uh, Santorum. Horstries made about 450 ducats. Farmlands, 330. 129 ducats from the district. Apparently, commerce this year is making negative 1,200 ducats which is a huge loss right there. This province... So yeah, that was 89 development, and Mappa's 97 development. Buildings. Not that great buildings all around. Pretty low buildings. This province has uh, farmlands, 666, 350 ducats, 600 ducats from the forestry. This province, 60 development with uh, 100 ducats from its farmland, 360 ducats from its forestry. Oh yeah, and then the uh, 2 million people live here, 2 million resident, uh, peasants live there, 1.6 million peasants live there. 3.3 million peasants live here, growing by its natural changes, 24,263 with a little bit of a migration. I'm surprised nobody's migrating out of this province with 3.3 million people living here. The uh, farmlands is 754 ducats, 833 ducats from its forestries. 
Negative 64 ducats from industrial property. I'm surprised with 3.3 million people living in this province, its development is only 68. That's interesting. My capital, 81 development, 1.3 million peasants living there, 118,000 residents. Makes 250 ducats from farmlands, 312 ducats from forestries. My uh, former capital has uh, 73 development. About a million peasants living there, 119,000 residents. Makes 300 ducats from forestries, 127 ducats from industrial property, 134 ducats from farmlands. This is the largest city on the continent, so that is the uh, city with the most urban pops. And there's a little bit of provinces over here that towards the end I also invested in a little bit as well. This province has close to 2 million peasants living in it. Its uh, mines, which is salt mines, make about close to 500 ducats, 500 ducats from its farmlands, 150 ducats from its forestry, 60 development, this province. About to 1.3 million peasants here. This one also has salt as well, so 534 ducats from salt, 260 from farmlands, 108 from forestries. I guess I had 1.3 million people living there. 1.2 million people living north of that province. A little bit of money from its farmlands. Not much else. This province, close to a million people living there. 319 ducats from its farmlands. Fortunately with silver, one of the problems is silver doesn't really produce any income. So, the silver mines over here, like Potosi, never really got off the ground because they're just unprofitable. Because they don't produce... The silver itself doesn't give any money. It's supposed to give luxury goods. It's supposed to produce luxury goods, which is what you get your money from. Silver in this patch does not produce any luxury goods, so silver mines are completely worthless, which is unfortunate because this silver mine is size 900, so if that was 900 and a 900 size, that would be producing a lot of gold. But it was not meant to be. Alright, and then these provinces, like 60-ish development, or 40-ish development, 500,000 people living there, I'll just ignore those. Cusco has about a million people living in it. A million peasants. About 58,000 residents. A little bit of farmlands, 400 ducats there, 374 ducats from its mines, its mines being salt mines. Yeah, salt mines really, uh were the things that uh, gave a lot of money. This province is supposed to produce gems, and I think coal? Yeah, it's, this province is supposed to produce salt, gems, and coal, but its mine size is none, so that's unfortunate. This could have been a uh, good province to produce stuff from its mines. I think this province produced coal. 150 ducats from coal, 200 from farmlands. A million people living there. This province has 77 ducats. I think gems as well as silver. I think gems are practically the, practically the same thing as silver. I don't think this province... This province never actually even had gems. Because sometimes, if the AI holds provinces, they won't open up industries. So this province went... The uh, mine size is 247 out of 247, so opening gems in this province is worthless because of the mine size. It should get a little bit over time because of technology increasing industry size, but it's not really all that much. This province had uh, 1.3 million peasants. They made close to 600 ducats from their farmlands. Mexico, 65 development. This was a province that I conquered late. Close to a million people living there. There's a couple of gold provinces. This province has a 607 size gold, produces about 380 ducats. 200 ducats from its farmlands. 
close to a million people living there. This province, 300 size mines, 221 ducats from that. Just to show that, it says gold's in the middle, I'll put bullion, which is the actual gold itself, which you make no money from. Underneath that has, this produces 6.397 units of luxury, which I don't think 6.397 units of luxury is actually worth 270 ducats, so I'm not sure the internal specifics on that, but there's something else going on because 6.3 units of luxury would produce would not produce 270 ducats, so I think they just had to assign the production to something, so they put it into luxury, but then it's it sells for more than... 6.3 units of luxury wood. And that's probably why silver ran into problems, because they just didn't do those calculations with silver. And there's a bunch of gold provinces in the interior. Fine size, 180 out of 180 makes 141 there. 137, it looks like they make about 140 ducats each. Yeah. Okay, this one is gems, which is classified as rare metal. Yeah, precious metal. Which it's interesting because it says it shows up as rare metal, and then it's actually in the industry list as precious metal. It produces no luxury units. Output bullion, no luxury there. So gems and silver, at least in this patch. I'm not sure if it's fixed in the uh, newest patch, but they don't do anything. And then I also noticed for most of the campaign, the gold provinces were size 18, and then all of a sudden they just went up 10 times. So I'm not sure what was going on there as well, but that was a that was a problem. All right, this map mode is total population. So I reviewed most of the uh, provinces with high population because those should be the provinces with high development. But I'll just look at this for uh, provinces potentially over 1 million or close to 1 million peasant size. This province has 840,000 size. Maybe there's a couple provinces that would surprise me. That's 750,000. 525,000, so not a whole lot there. 570,000. This province has 1.1 million. A little bit of money from its farmlands. 300 ducats, 143 ducats from its mines. Mines are coal, sea salt, and metal. I looked at those provinces, at that province, 700,000 there, 500,000 there, yeah, so most of the uh, provinces with a lot of population have high development, which makes sense. This province has 1.05 million, so... Probably about a dozen, between a dozen to two dozen provinces have more than one million rural population. This is not bad. This is a uh, per capita wealth map mode. Which I think follows development for the most part. Provinces with higher development have higher per capita. Values. And then this is food production, so... Yeah, the greener province is the more food it produces. I think this is our highest food production province, producing 550 units of food. This one seems kind of green as well. What is it? Produce? It produces... 511, so less than the other province. Go ahead and I want to compare this to the world. Alright, so our province is yellow, which isn't... Actually, it looks like most... Yellow looks to be the lowest... So our greenest provinces become green-ish. This province that uh, I invested in as Portugal 
produces 977 units of crops. With only irrigation rank 2, actually. That's interesting. Yeah, India is the uh, winner of crop production. 1,185 units of crop in that province. And then China, of course. China really has no excuse. This province makes 1,672 ducats from farmlands. One thousand four hundred fifty-seven units of crop. One thousand five hundred fifty-five units of crop in that province. Seventeen hundred ducats profit. One thousand six hundred ninety-five in that province with uh, sixteen hundred ducats of profit. I'm gonna look at population. Total population again. World view. Okay, so these couple of provinces. I think our highest province was this one, 3.3 .3 million. 3 million there, yes. So 3.3 .3 million. Who beats 3.3 .3 million? Of course it's in China. Yeah, their provinces are solidly green, so I imagine these have a lot. 5.7 million there. 7.3 million in that province. 6.8 million there. 6 million people here. Only peasants in this province, which is interesting. It's kind of weird. I've never seen that before. Just peasants in a province. Alright, yeah, so that is the map modes. Go ahead and switch to a um, timeline now. Doing both, doing uh, North and South America, and then I'll do a global view. Alright, here is the timeline. And this is the global time. Alright, that is it for Brazil. 
I hope you enjoyed the campaign, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.